Today, almost exactly two years ago, I set off on a mission, on an expedition. The goal was to climb the Kilimanjaro, a majestic mountain, 6,000 meter high, the highest of Africa. A normal climb takes about six to seven days, and that's with a reason, because although it's not technically a challenging climb, it's still quite a dangerous one. Because of the height, you run the risk of having an altitude disease with a potential risk of having fluids in your lungs or your brain to swell with a potentially fatal outcome. From the normal climbers, something between 40 to 60 percent actually reaches the top because of the altitude disease. Our expedition, however, was led by Wim Hof, the Iceman. You might know him because of his extreme records, like sitting in the ice for two hours, or trying to um, climb the Mount Everest in shorts. Uh, so you might imagine that our expedition was a little bit more extreme. We set out to climb the Kilimanjaro in under the two days, and of course, we were also attempting to do it in shorts. Because the temperatures above, uh, at the top of Kilimanjaro, are something around minus 10 or minus 20 degrees, uh, the risk of getting injured increased even higher. So by now, you might wonder why would a sane person, a mother of three, would want to do such a thing? Well, the story started a little bit earlier. Seven years ago, I was on my way to my work when I suddenly lost a part of my sight. And it was a total bummer, because I really, really love my work. And I love my work so much, in fact, that it's even an insult to call it work. Because what were we doing? Back then, I was in my 20s, we were working on this Wikipedia kind of platform that was connecting people all over the world in such a way that they were able to work on their own projects and on their own solutions um, in order to improve the problems they encounter in their day-to-day -day lives. This platform, called the One Percent Club, uh, was created because we really believe that deep down inside we are all collaborative creatures, empathic beings, that do nothing rather than work with each other and improve our world. And it was totally the side guys, you know, because we don't longer believe that these cathedral-like institutions, like our governments, our schools and our hospitals, on their own can solve all the challenges and all the problems that are facing us. Uh, they top, even though there's a lot of expertise within the walls, the top-down approach and the one-to-many solutions are just not enough anymore. If you, go, if you look at the scale and the amount of the challenges that are facing us, and on the same side, uh, the amount and the diversity of the solutions that is needed. The good news is, there's a whole world outside. A world filled with resources, with time, with expertise, with like-minded people that work, want to work with you on the very one solution that you are looking for. Although it might seem chaotic at first, sometimes we call it the bazaar, we believe that with the right answers and with the right instructions, we can get out of that bazaar exactly the resources that we need at that time. And um, we were kind of successful, fortunately, by now, we're building this kind of structures for cities and for companies that use them to engage the citizens or the co-workers to create their own solutions they find needed. And even though I didn't know all of that seven years ago, I was still pretty excited. I was excited with this endless field of potential, with these opportunities that were just hanging in the air, and with our young company that was just about to grow. And that was the day I lost my sight. And I can tell you that the rest of that day was not the best day of my life. By the end of that day, I found out I got uh, multiple sclerosis, or MS, as it's called, which is actually a disease that affects your nerves in such a way that you might indeed lose a part of your sight, in my case, luckily, temporarily, but also might lose, cause you your ability, to lose your ability to walk, to swallow, to talk, and even to think. Best of case, you get to be tired all the time. 
Well, that was for me, back then a mother of two small children and a starting entrepreneur, not something I was waiting for. So there I was, um, going to my doctor, uh, and even though there was like the normal things you will face when you are confronted with a diagnosis, the fear, not knowing what's going to happen, for me, the biggest challenge was actually being a patient. Because what does it mean? For me, it was being part of a system that had a huge impact on my life, and I had nothing to say about. Long story short, after a thorough investigation, it was not a light decision, I decided not to go down that path, not to follow the traditional medical treatment. And I went out to the bazaar, looking out what was else there. And uh, I tell you one thing, once you enter the bazaar of the alternative medicine, sooner or later, you will find the Iceman. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I look him up, and uh, Wim Hof is an interesting man for many reasons, but what triggered me the most was the first time I saw him, his story was told by a scientist. So there it was, the cathedral and the bazaar on the same stage. Um, and the scientists took exactly this one piece of knowledge Wim Hof had and translated it in such a way that I understood how it could benefit me. In this specific case, it was the ability of Wim Hof to influence his own aut autonomous nerve system and his immune system, which was quite interesting stuff for somebody like me with MS that is believed to be an autoimmune disease. So I went on, I, went, I trained with the Iceman in his center in Poland. Uh, it was quite an adventure. And later that year, I also signed up for the um, expedition to Kilimanjaro. It was quite a journey into the unexpected, a great opportunity to face all you, not all, but most of your biggest fears, um, a nice momentum to let go of a couple of things. And it was a journey I can tell you a thousand things about, perhaps how it ended, that's a little spoiler there, but I will not do it here, because uh, I wrote a whole book about it. And that book, I hope, is a fascinating account of this journey that went much further than just climbing the Kilimanjaro. But it remains just one account. While I believe there was so much more data and information that we could have gathered from, for example, what happened on that mountain that kept all of the 25 participants strong and healthy. Or, what happens to me, the lucky MS patient? What happens to the other MS patients that don't experience the symptoms? We are not the ones that visit the hospitals. I will tell you the two biggest lessons I've learned here, though. One is, of course, that there's more outside the cathedral that we can harvest, that can benefit, in this case, the patients. But we can only do so if we are guided by the experts from the cathedral. We need that knowledge, and we need the structure. The other lesson is far more personal and far more, perhaps, even important for me. Our ability to influence our lives is small, far more smaller than you would like to admit. And I believe that a system that actually includes a patient in, their, in this process of finding a cure for the disease or any other way that we can find to improve our lives, it's a much more healthy, much more energizing system than one that puts you on the passive role, on the receiving end of things. And I believe a similar view of the whole world is in place as well. We are a part of many systems, our educational system, our economy, the way we organize our labor. And many of those encounters leave us with a feeling of a paralyzed feeling of a lack of saying, of a lack of influence. Let's turn that around. Let's start building this world based on this deep sense of connection, not only with each other, but especially with the systems that shape our lives.
Thank you.